Ladies and gentlemen, it is time for us to have a serious conversation about Buddy Heald. Okay, somebody has to say it. We need to discuss it because let's be honest, Buddy Heald has not lived up to par so far with the Philadelphia 76ers. Now, I personally think there are various reasons for that, which we will get into, but I want to pose the question back to you. Let me know your thoughts down below. What do you think is the issue right now with Buddy Heald? Why has he not performed consistently? Since coming to the Philadelphia 76ers, we will get into it all. Welcome on in, though. This is Philly Take with RB. I'm RB. You can follow me on all socials. All our links are down below in the description, and you can support us in a ton of ways. But here we are covering the Sixers, and the Sixers have 10 games to go, and they are sitting in the number eight seed. That's right. The race for number six comes down to the last part of the season. We never thought we'd be here. This is where they are, half game behind Miami. They need to win games. They've lost three out of the last four. Finally, the West Coast trip is done with, but it is time to get home and get on it. And one player that needs to tremendously step up is Buddy Heald. And here is how I feel about Buddy Heald. I put this tweet out earlier today, posing the question to Sixer fans. And you can follow me on Twitter at RB Philly Take. I said after scoring 20 plus points in each of his first four games as a sixer, right? He was lighting up the floor. He was incredible. He has not gone above the 20 point mark one time. So the question is, was Buddy Heald in a honeymoon phase or is it more on the Sixers for struggling to utilize him in the correct way and bring out his skill set and bring out his strengths? And to be quite honest, I think it's a mixture of both. We got a ton of comments on this post. Uh, We'll go through a couple here. Austin talks about Tyrese Maxey. So, uh, you know, I do agree. Everybody on the team certainly has to be consistent. Anna here says it was less of a honeymoon phase, but other teams weren't prepared for him. So, you know, anytime a guy goes to a new situation or he's on a new team, sometimes you get that instant spark of energy, right? And then teams watch more film and they adjust and, You know, they get used to it. Uh, There was a lot of comments talking about how much he's playing and how they're not getting him enough touches or looks. Shout out to my guy Harrison here. He says it's a combination of them struggling to use him correctly and the lack of interior gravity. Teams have zero reason to pack the paint without Joel Embiid. Him returning should greatly benefit Heald. And I do think that is certainly true. But when it comes down to the Philadelphia 76ers, you have to keep something in mind here, ladies and gentlemen. They traded for Buddy Heald. They gave up multiple second round picks. They dumped salary and they did acquire his bird rights, which would give you the intention that, okay, they're going to try to resign him, but nothing is given, right? If Buddy Heald doesn't work out, if he's not polished and they don't think that he's worth it and they can make a big trade this summer or sign a big time free agent, we may not see Buddy Heald back on this team. And to me, that would be a waste of assets, which is again, why I said at the deadline, you either go all in or all out. And I feel like they went one foot in one foot out, but It all depends on if Joel Embiid comes back. That is the million-dollar question. Who knows at this point? We still don't get any updates. But when it comes down to Buddy Heald, I do think he needs to be utilized more properly than he has been. And I want to give a shout-out to the Discord. If you guys are not a part of the Discord, I always say this on our shows, join the Philly Take Discord. Essentially, it is like a group chat for all of your favorite sports fans, Sixer fans, etc., As you can see, this is our Discord here. We have all these like servers, channels set up. We have a ton of people in here just chatting. And one of the members in the Discord, again, you get to learn about the game and interact with other fans behind the scenes. But one of our great members here in DuckAB1 actually put up some film clips. And I was looking through these and I thought it was a really good point when I asked the question in here as well. And He says the Sixers refuse to swing the ball to him or run any dribble handoffs or floppies for him. They blatantly look him off or give him last rush passes and late clock missiles. And I do think there is some validity to this. So let's go ahead and pull this first play up. This guy came prepared. Like I said, we have good discussions in here, man. Tobias Harris at the top. He's going to dribble in. You see Buddy over here in the corner, right? A lot of space given from the defender as they're leaking over. We know Tobias likes to dribble out the shot clock, doesn't look. You got a shooter wide open. Why is Buddy Heald not getting a look there? He definitely has dropped his amount of touches, you know, per game since he came to Philly. But I also do think, again, this has been the trajectory of his career, right? He is a bit of a streaky shooter, like many are. 
And, you know, while he is good when he's on fire, and I feel like I actually said this on the deadline day, like when you're getting the on fire version, the on, you know, just can't miss, like you have laser focus, buddy healed. He is incredible. But on the flip side, it could get pretty bad at times. And that has just kind of been how his career is going. Here's another action where you see a dribble into the paint. Once again, Buddy Hill has a little bit of space. They don't look at him. Now they spin it back out, and Buddy gets it with 10 on the shot clock, and he has to create. Dumps it down low and gets it to go. But again, he is put in a bit of a tough situation. I will say, when Buddy Hill came to the Philadelphia 76ers, a lot of us were taken aback and in shock. Like, wow, this guy's actually turned into more of a creator off the dribble. He's taking it to the rim. He's creating for his teammates. And it just is not something we were used to seeing from Buddy Heald. I do think maybe the impact of Kyle Lowry took away from Buddy, right? Like now you have another facilitator on the floor. You don't need that as much from Buddy Heald. But he is definitely taking a step back in that area as well as defense. I mean, he's never been the best defender, but um, it just seems like in a way he is in his head and a lot of his game is being impacted by the fact that they're not getting him touches on the offensive end. Here's another play in the Discord. We're going to watch this after the Kings miss. This was from last night, Tobias. Bringing it down, dumps it to Maxi, And Maxi in transition, why not hit Buddy right here for a quick three? Let him fire away. When he's confident, when he's looking at the basket, just ready to let it fly, he usually puts it through the hole. And it does feel like they're just not creating looks for him or, or drawing up plays or whatever it is. Maybe he's just not that good. Is that the answer? Maybe he needs a Joel Embiid on the floor, like Harrison said, because when it comes down to these shooters, that's how they're optimized in the Joel Embiid system, right? You think about the Seth Curry role. You think about the J.J. Redick role. Coming off these dribble handoffs, coming off these flare screens, like they are good with the quick actions and just catch and shoot. Don't think about anything else. And that's what the Sixers traded for. But I start to personally worry if this continues on and if he goes into the playoffs and plays as bad as he is right now and you get to the playoffs and, you know, you get washed in the first or second round, does this turn into another McDaniel situation? Does this turn into a situation where you give up assets at the deadline and then you just let them walk for nothing? I mean, I don't really think that would be a smart decision, but it all depends what he looks like with Joel Embiid. The question is, will he ever get that opportunity? Here's the last play. Once again, Tobias up at the top. And again, we're just so frustrated with Tobias Harris. I'm not going to continue to say it, but he just takes touches away from others. And I do think that's the truth. Here's Buddy coming off. A little bit of a pin down. Gets it. Dumps it back to Lowry. Here's Buddy. And once again, you know, he's just, he's contested. And here's Tobias Harris. Posts up. Defender leaking over. Boom. Right there. He needs to hit Buddy Hill. But he's so one-way focused, like, oh, I need to go and try to get this shot. And he's going to put it up contested. Nice shot by Tobias, usually is on the other end of it. But Buddy Hield had an open look there. So that's kind of where we're at, man. Uh, I think Buddy Hield is struggling with a variety of things. I do think they need to make him more of a focal part of the offense like they did in the first four games. I mean, if we pull up the game logs here, he was playing very well when he got traded to Philly. Right, 20 points, 23, 24, 22, and it just has gone down over time. Now, when you look at his numbers for the season and his numbers with Philly, he's actually shooting around the same clip that he did with Indiana. He's scoring the same amount of points, but I just feel like with Joel being down, with Tobias being this bad, you need others to step up. For instance, Kelly Oubre, who is a minimum player, has taken the reins And he has said, I am going to go out there and essentially be the second option on this team on a nightly basis. Why? Because they're shorthanded and because they need me. That is a winning type player. And that is why I think Kelly Oubre has earned a contract extension. But you look at these numbers as of late. Look at the last four games. Been in single digits every game. Buddy Heald is struggling mightily. And if they don't correct this, last night he goes 0 for 6 from 3. If they don't get him some more looks, I'm worried that we get to the point where you can't turn back. Even with Joel Embiid, I guess it would be a different team, a different offense. But that takes time to really get used to it, right? Buddy Hield hasn't played with Joel Embiid. He's never played with a guy like Joel Embiid. So it'll be interesting to see how this one plays out, man. But they need to get Buddy Hield right. That would really take a lot of pressure that we are seeing off of Tyrese Maxey. 
uh, on a nightly basis, and hopefully it would give the Sixers another viable option. So give me your thoughts down below. Appreciate everybody for tapping in. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. That being said, I'll catch you on the next one. Peace. Peace.